Good afternoon, and thank you for coming for the last session for today. Uh, the session will be about fuzzing. Uh, in particular, I will talk about fuzzing Clang and LVM itself using uh, a library called libprotobuf mutator. And this is a joint work between myself and two more guys in my team, Vitaly and Matt, who are present in this audience. So I'll talk about fuzzing in general. I will talk about fuzzing components of Clang and LVM. And I will concentrate on fuzzing them better. Let's go. First of all, let's uh, remember what, what fuzzing is. If you test your application or your API, you typically send a fixed number of fixed inputs into your API and then observe the behavior. When you fuzz the same API, the process is that you generate random inputs or semi-random inputs for your API and feed them into your API in an infinite loop. There are lots of different types of fuzzing tools. We call them fuzzing engines. Uh, my talk mostly is about coverage-guided uh, fuzzing tools and specifically about libfuzzer. There are also tools like AFL, which is also coverage-guided fuzzer, and there are lots of other tools that are not coverage-guided fuzzers. One of them is well-known in the LVM community. It's called CSmith. Uh, well, CLI is also well-known in the LVM community, I believe. Uh, so what, what is coverage-guided fuzzing? Suppose you have an API that consumes some data, and suppose you already have a test corpus for this API. Then, in, a, in an infinite loop, you pick a random input from your corpus and apply a random mutation to it, and then feed this mutation to your API. While doing this, you observe the code coverage. If you see any new code coverage, you say, okay, this input is interesting, let's put it back to the initial corpus. That's it. That's all about coverage-guided fuzzing. And there is a library for uh, doing coverage-guided fuzzing in LVM. The library is called libfuzzer. And this slide uh, shows how to use it on a very simple case. So we have an API. In this case, it's a single tiny function called fuzzme, which consumes data. And who can spot the bug, by the way? Who can spot the bug in the function fuzz me. You don't count. Who else? Okay, I've, I've heard out of range, yes. Uh, this element may, uh, will cause buffer overflow. Uh, and it's very hard to find this kind of bug with testing, but very easy to find this kind of bug with fuzzing. All you need to do uh, to, to fuzz this code with libfuzzer, uh, you need to compile it with a special switch, fsanitize fuzzer. And if you want to find buffer overflows, also fsanitize address, and then run it. We already have a bunch of what I call simple fuzzers in our LLVM tree. That includes clank format, clank fuzzer, uh, dwarf dump, uh, two different demanglers, and so on. But having the fuzzers in the tree is not enough, right? You may have tests, but unless you run the tests, you'll not find the bugs. Same with fuzzers. You need to run them somehow. Luckily, there is a, uh, a service called OSS Fuzz. Uh, and I'm one of, the, uh, one of those who built this service. Uh, the service is, is a continuous automated fuzzing for open source software. And if you're interested in more details, uh, here is the GitHub link, and there is a link for uh, my talk at Usenix Security earlier this year. But in short, this is a black box for you where you put fuzzers and get bug reports out. Uh, of course, LVM is already integrated with this uh, service, so we get some interesting things out of it. Uh, the demangler is probably the simplest uh, fuzzing target there is, because what demangler is? Demangler is a single function 
that consumes data and produces buffer overflows. Uh, excuse me, yeah, it produces something else, but sometimes buffer overflows as well. So we have we a have couple of demangler fuzzers from LVM in OSS fuzz, and this is an incomplete list of, of bugs that were found. Most of them are fixed. Uh, this is a fuzzer for Clank format. Uh, and we have just a tiny bit of bugs reported here. But unfortunately, that's not because Clank format is almost bug free. On the contrary, it's so buggy uh, that the bugs pop up in the first seconds of fuzzing and the, uh, the continuous fuzzing doesn't give anything else. So un unless we fix those, we'll not know about more interesting bugs. We also have dwarf dump fuzzer, quite a few bugs. Some of them are fixed now, some of them are not. Uh, and the most interesting, we have clank fuzzer. It's the most sophisticated code. It doesn't actually fit on the slide in, in reasonable font size. Uh, and we have uh, quite a few bugs found and some of them are fixed. So how do we, how do we find bugs in, in those four Fuzz targets in LVM that uh, that I mentioned so far. Libfuzzer takes an input from the corpus and flips a random bit. More or less that. It does a few other tricks, like inserting magic values or removing byte sequences. But the essential part of the fuzzing is bit flipping. And what do you think? How uh, how much C++ code will you? get by bit flipping some other C++ code. Not, not really much. This is, this is what we get when we fuzz Clang in, in a regular bit flipping way. So if you pass this uh, four byte sequence to Clang, it will think it's, it's a C++, but we'll have a heap buffer overflow in a lexer. If you put this byte sequence, it will also do something nasty like use after free, also in the lexer. And note uh, this four, four byte C A S S. It thinks that this is a misspelled class. So it, it invokes a whole bunch of, of logic for reporting misspelled keywords and then fails spectacularly. You can also put some total garbage here and get an infinite CPU and RAM consumption. Are these bugs interesting? I would say they are somewhat interesting, but they do not ever touch the optimizer and the code generator. They stress the lexer mostly and sometimes the parser. My biggest trouble with these bugs is that nobody is fixing them, but they're also not the most interesting ones. So what, what about fuzzing deeper layers of LLVM? And this is not just about LLVM or Clang. This is, a, this is a general problem of fuzzing APIs that consume highly structured data. Suppose you have a, an input that is a valid input for that API. You flip a bit. This input doesn't parse anymore. And so you only stress the parser. You don't go anywhere uh, deep inside the application. So a couple of years ago, we started uh, doing what we now call structure-aware mutations, which is a specialized solution for every given input type. How it works? We suppose that we already have a corpus of inputs that parse, that, that are valid according to the syntax of the input language. And then we parse a random input and we apply a local mutation to that input in memory such that the, the object remains valid in terms of, of the syntax. And then we feed this mutation uh, into, the, into the API. Libfuzzer has two functions uh, that allow you to implement structure-aware mutations uh, for your data structure. One function is actually not the function that libfuzzer provides, it's the function that libfuzzer wants you to provide. Uh, the function is called fuzzer custom mutator. Uh, it consumes data and you have to mutate this data in place according to the rules of your input language. The second function, this time 
is provided by libfuzzer is the function that will mutate raw data that you provided. So if you want to parse your data structure, identify a leaf data member, and then mutate it as raw data, you can do it using uh, libfuzzer provided mutations. If you have seen uh, or watched on YouTube uh, a talk by Justin Bogner uh, from half a year ago called Adventures in Fuzzy Instruction Selection, uh, Justin has done exactly that with LLVM IR. He implemented a custom mutator that takes bytes, parses them as LLVM IR. If they don't parse, the, the data is rejected. Uh, if they do parse, we get an LVM IR object in memory. And then the mutator actually changes the, uh, the IR a little bit and returns it back. And then the fuzzer feeds it to the LVM pass that we're fuzzing. Look at these beauties on this slide. Uh, these are two bugs that we detected a few days ago on OSS Fuzz by fuzzing. Uh, by running this LVM iCell fuzzer. Uh, these are valid uh, LVM IRs, both of them. Uh, they parse, the optimizations try to work on them, and then something goes wrong. In one case, we have an assertion. In one case, we have uh, internal compiler error. Note that these two pieces of LVM IR were synthesized from scratch. Like, fuzzer didn't know anything about anything. It just started working and synthesized those two fine pieces of code. But I'm going to talk about something else now. We at Google have a big hammer. It is called protocol buffers. And every time we see a nail, we were trying to apply this hammer to, to that nail. Sometimes that is not a nail. So the rest of my talk about using a hammer to, to something that is not a nail. Well, looks similar, though. For those of you who don't know what protocol buffers are, uh, it is a mechanism for serializing structured data. This is more or less all you need to know. And the tiny example on the slide shows a data structure defined as a protocol buffer message. The data structure has two fields, a string and an integer. And the second box shows an object of this type as it is serialized on disk in a text format. Protocol buffers also have a binary, uh, highly compressed format as well. Given the proto buffers, we have implemented a library that applies a single random mutation to a given protocol buffer message. Uh, this is a library that, given a valid message, produces another valid message that is almost the same as the, the first one. And this is an example of mutations that you can get uh, from a protobuf mutator. For example, if you had a message containing hello and 42, one mutation can uh, get it to help 42, uh, and another mutation will may change 42 to 911. If the, 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 the protocol buffers could be nested, so it, it is a tree-like structure in general, and protobuf mutator may apply changes not just to the leaf function, uh, leaf uh, members of the function, but also to the tree structure. We at Google have a lot of uh, APIs that consume a protobuffer. And so consider this is your API uh, that already consumes a protobuffer that you want to test. And for example, it has a bug if a very specific input is provided. In, in this case, help and 911. Uh, then in our build system, in our infrastructure, all you need to do to start fuzzing this API is these three lines. You define a protofuzzer that consumes a given message type 
and then you pass this message type to, to your API. This is it. And this is a nail. This is the thing that, that is well suited for using your hammer on. Now, Clang is the screw, but we have still tried. First of all, we have defined a protobuffer, a protobuffer type that represents a tiny subset of C++. Let me try to show you the full text if, if I can. Yep. So this is the actual protobuffer that is uh, committed to LVM trunk. What it says, there is a variable reference, there is L value, there is a constant, there is a binary operation that could be of uh, several different types. The binary operation contains the type, the left operator and the right operator, uh, both of which are R values. The R value is one of variable, constant, or a binary operator. So this is a fairly typical description of, uh, of an expression. Then we have assignment statement, then we have an if-else if statement, we have a while loop, we have uh, an arbitrary statement, statement sequence, and then a function. This is it. 93 lines of code with uh, spaces and comments. Just a second. Yep. So we have defined this uh, protocol buffer that resembles a subset of C++. Next we did, we implemented a very simple and straightforward function that converts this protocol buffer object in memory into a string that is an actual C++ code. And this is very straightforward boilerplate C++ that just takes the protocol buffer in memory and dumps uh, it as a C++. Excuse me. Yep. And then we implemented the fast target in, in, in the usual way. We have a protocol buffer. And let's feed it into, into our API, except that the API contains, uh, the API uh, consumes C++. We have a protobuffer, so we have to do this uh, intermediate step, translate a protobuffer into, into C++. Uh, we reused this function handle CXX from the plain clank fuzzer. So what, what this function does is it consumes a string of C++ uh, code and then does whatever the usual clank binary does, except that it doesn't read or write files. That's basically clank. And the current state of, of this fuzzer is it's a toy prototype because it only generates a small subset of uh, C++ language. Actually, it's, it's a C. It's a subset of C. Yet we have found a few things. And as I hope you will see from the, this and the following slides, uh, the tests that we generate they go through lexer and parser without any problems because they are just very basic, very plain C without any fancy syntax sugar or lexing sugar. And then they, uh, then they stress the optimizer and the code generator. Uh, this is more or less the typical example that is generated from my uh, protocol buffer. As you can see, uh, there are lots of while statements and there are lots of assignment statements and some binary operations. In this example, there is no ifs. And this particular uh, case uh, caused clang to, clang to hang in uh, jump threading. Here is another case. It caused use after poison, which is a fancy way to say use after free in selection DAG. Uh, this one caused the fatal error. And this is my favorite. We found it last week. Last week? No, I think we found it on Monday. Uh, it was actually a regression which was caught uh, within a couple of days after the uh, buggy commit uh, was in. It's an older reference in scale revolution. So 
let's compare the, the two approaches, the, the approach that we've taken in, in protobuffers and the approach uh, that Justin have taken in uh, iCell fuzzer. First of all, I want to say that the approach taken by Justin makes a lot of sense. This, this is an amazing thing. It has to be done this way, absolutely. Uh, it is much more work, but it is already done, so this is not an argument against iCell fuzzer. Uh, it might help us to reuse a, a large corpus of existing tests that are already in LVM IR form, although we're not actually using them right now to fuzz. And this doesn't introduce any new things. Like, we don't introduce any new fake AR in protocol buffers. And since it doesn't involve Clank, we, we fuzz uh, LVM IR directly, it is somewhat faster. So what about the protocol buffer uh, mutator approach? First of all, it's easy to express a subset of C++, very easy. I've done it probably in 20 minutes, but it's pretty hard to express full C++. It will be a sophisticated project. Uh, I could see two, uh, two ways to distinguish this work from IR mutation. Uh, First of all, we can try to, uh, to target a very specific subset of, of language and fuzz only that. One example would be uh, nested loops, for example, to fuzz poly. And the second benefit of this approach is that uh, it is not LVM specific in any way. We can apply it to other languages, we can apply it to other compilers, and so on. I've mentioned CSmith in the beginning of the talk. So what about CSmith? Who knows about CSmith, by the way? Ah, good. So CSmith is a generation-based fuzzer, meaning that it knows the syntax of a subset of C, and it generates the inputs uh, f that follow that syntax. It's an amazing fuzzer. It, it has found many bugs in all the compilers that I know of. Uh, but it doesn't use the trick with the coverage feedback that uh, coverage guided fuzzers use. And so uh, the hypothesis, proven by many other cases, is that CSmith doesn't actually find enough bugs. It could find more. And one of the ways to, to improve uh, our protocol buffer based uh, fuzzing is to uh, combine them with CSmith-like syntax or uh, grammar. Fuzzing Clang in general and fuzzing Clang with protocol buffers is, to, to lots of, for, for, for lots of reasons, problematic. First of the reasons is, uh, unfortunately, not technical but social. Uh, bugs are being fixed too slow, if at all. Uh, the fast targets, the, the simple fast targets I mentioned to you, not all of, not all of the bugs uh, get any attention. Like uh, the, manglers, the mangler bugs are fixed, clan bugs are sometimes fixed, dwarf dump sometimes, clan format almost never. Uh, and the, the related uh, but still a different problem is that we often have uh, infinite loops in the compiler. Like, this is another example of, of plain C code that we found by uh, protocol buffer fuzzing with Clang. Uh, Clang never finishes compiling this piece of code. It's pretty sim simple code, but for whatever reason, uh, it tries to scalar evolution it uh, infinitely. And even if we didn't have any timeouts, Clang and LVM are too slow for efficient fuzzing. We typically get from five to 20 inputs per second, and this is with both uh, Clank protocol buffer fuzzing and uh, IR level uh, fuzzing. So what's next? First of all, uh, both Clank protofuzzer and LVM iCell fuzzer uh, have been added to OSS fuzz just very recently. So we don't really have statistics to compare and, and do, some, uh, do some reasoning. We did, we did find, both of them did find several bugs, but that's not enough, we'll observe. 
if you want to contribute to uh, Clunk Protofuzzer, there are several, several ways to help us uh, that I can see. First of all, if you, if, if you like this approach, try to express some other subset of C++ as a protocol buffer message. It could be a larger C++ subset, or it could be just a different subset. Again, uh, the, the most interesting example for me is nested loops, but you can find something else. And if you, if you find some interesting subset of C++, it would be 100 to 200 lines of very straightforward code to write, more or less a boilerplate. <clears throat> it would be interesting to make the generated programs runnable, like in CSmith, because the, the currently uh, generated programs are just nonsense. If, if you try to run them, nothing interesting will happen. Well, they will probably either crash or go into infinite loop. And it's also entertaining to, to try the same approach on other compilers. Now, how, do, how can you contribute to fuzzing LLVM in general, not only Clunk Protofuzzer? First of all, please try to fix the crashes, the timeouts, and the out-of-memory bugs that were already found. There are probably 50 of them. If you don't want to fix the bugs yourself, but you own the code that has the bugs, please answer to the code reviews. We have several instances of uh, people who want to fix the bugs, but they're not owners, and they don't get any responses. This is related to a discussion that, that is going on forever in the community related to the starter projects. So unfortunately, fixing bugs is not a starter project, uh, is not a good starter project, because the code review never happened. And my last message to you, if you are developing a new feature, please create a dedicated fuzzer for it from scratch, because it will, it will save you time and energy in future. And once you have this fuzzer, We'll gladly have it on OSS fast so that it fast continuously and automatically. This is it. Uh, thank you for your attention and questions. Thank you for the presentation. And we have uh, plenty of time for questions. So. Hey, Kastya. Um, I've s I, d I haven't seen a lot of types in the generated. Uh, C subset of C or C++ code. So if I want to uh, stress the clamp front end type checker, or somehow I want to uh, test clamp front end, but, but I want to bypass the type checker, um, do you think it's easy to do using protobuf um, generated C code? Can you bypass the type checker? Yeah, because uh, uh, it's not a tree structure anymore. Yeah, when the types, uh, abundant types are involved then uh, but uh, this code basically that all almost all the generated code as I imagine won't by, uh, won't pass the type checker there will be some type errors and uh, you cannot test anything after that so uh, can we generate the code that will pass with, with more types that will still pass the type checking yes I believe we can because like this will be a part of grammar now. If we can express the grammar in a way that we don't have type uh, bugs, then we'll just generate it without type bugs. But it could be tricky. OK. Thanks. Hi, Kostya. So the crux in CSmith is undefined behavior avoidance. So, this is, so the property that we want isn't just runnable, it's deterministic. You know, and so all optimization levels have to return the same answer. And the problem is it's very hard to compose this with the search based on coverage. And there, I mean, it's, a real, it's really a research problem, and I don't really know how to solve it, but we should drink some beer and maybe figure it out. <laughs> hey, uh, don't worry. I'm not going to ask you about uh, Windows support for LibFuzzer. Uh, <laughs> um, but I do want to ask you, um, early on you mentioned that um, w with the whole code coverage thing, um, it will whenever it finds that a new, code co a new code path was taken, it will add that to the corpus, right? Um, so is there any way to get some feedback from the tool about what code paths it was not able to encounter or like a summary of the, the percentage of code that was covered? Because something like that might help you be able to devise new inputs to manually add to your corpus. 
can we get the information about what's covered and what's not covered? Uh, so first of all, the corpus that the fuzzer generates is just a set of files. You can then take the set of files and run it through your target with your favorite uh, coverage tool, and then you will have the coverage uh, uh, report from your favorite tool. Uh, now, the service, OSSFuzz, uh, provides the coverage dashboard using sanitizer coverage, which is far from perfect, but it's the only one that scales today. And tomorrow we'll have a both uh, related to Clank source coverage, which is totally amazing in the way it visualizes the code, but it doesn't scale on large applications yet, sadly. Uh, there is no perfect answer, but there are several good answers here. Does it does it do anything to um, does it do anything to try to encounter um, other branches that it hasn't been able to, or does it basically just keep generating random inputs based on the mutations and then hope that it finds something that it hasn't covered before? This is a question I believe about LeapFuzzer itself. Yeah. So LeapFuzzer does random mutations on randomly chosen inputs, but the the inputs are chosen with different weights, and the weight uh, given to the input depends on on the frequency of uh, uh, branches that it covers. So yes, it tries to steer the execution towards uh, new stuff. But this is mathematical statistics I'm, I'm not very strong at. I'm not sure I'm doing a good job. <laughs> okay. I hope I do. <clears throat> Hello. Um, thanks for the talk. We saw a lot of uh, compilers now used as web services or even in the cloud. <laughs> um, my question is, uh, we see a lot of bugs like chip confusion and stuff like that. Do you think you have a lot of, you find a lot of bugs that could be exploitable? Uh, even if Clang is using like ACLR and other things? Because it, it kind of can be kind of a concern if you try to run uh, compilation as, as a service. Okay, if you can collect it like that. Can we find the bugs that can be exploited? Yes, yes, and yes. Uh, so these are the bugs. What? <laughs> yeah, this is better. So these are the bugs that are currently open in the OSS Fast Bug Tracker. <laughs> They're public. As you can see, most of them are assertion failures. And maybe one stack buffer overflow, one, yeah. yeah. But we're building Clang in debug mode. Yeah. I've tried all these reproducers on the release mode, and half of the bugs are now buffer overflows or use after free. And since Clang is not hardened in any way, it's, it's just a monolithic binary, probably without uh, ASLR even. I believe half of these are somewhat exploitable, and yeah. maybe a couple are easily exploitable. Uh, okay. Actually, uh, you have a, a peak flag in CMake, but it's broken. I have, a, I have to do a peer about that, but okay. Yeah, that was uh, what, I, what I thought, actually. Thanks. Yep. So if you, if you want to find exploitable bug in Clang, you don't want to stress test the LVM. It's much easier to stress test the Lexer, which has all the gadgets for you. Hey, Kostya, thanks for your talk. Um, I saw your... Uh, your fuzzer, which tests the optimizer in the back end based on uh, a subset of C. Uh, I was wondering if you think there's opportunity to use the new fuzz mutate library to stress the same components of LLVM, hopefully uh, bypassing the Clang front end costs. So can we use the fuzz mutate library? That's exactly what LLVM I sell fuzzer does. So we already have it. Uh, OK, um, I guess. Um, my second, I uh, just wanted to also make a note of, um, in fact, yeah, I've, I've seen a couple of the dwarf dump fuzzer bugs come through. Um, a couple? <laughs> <laughs> um, I just wanted to highlight the fact that, yeah, it's, as someone who's not a code owner in that area, sending out patches is, um, it's slow because there's no review feedback. So I just wanted to emphasize that it, yeah, if you, if you are the code owner in these areas, it would be really helpful to get that feedback. Hey, Kostya. Um, one of the weaknesses you identified was basically that we, or the like C++ definitions file in the proto is not really big enough to generate 
more interesting inputs. Could we potentially auto-generate that from an EBNF syntax of C++? Can we generate the protocol buffer description from uh, some higher level description? I think we can. Uh, it might be tricky because, well, I'm not an expert in syntax parsing, but I've heard that C++ is context sensitive. And I also <laughs> heard that protocol buffers are not context sensitive. So it might be a challenge to, to bundle those two together. But it would be an extremely interesting exercise. Maybe an intern project. <laughs> so first of all, thank you for giving the talk. The thing I wanted to share was an observation. We have been running fuzzing extensively internally and have found something that surprised us, which is that fuzzing is really great at finding regressions much more so than the latent bugs in the system. Our main use for our fuzzer at this point is finding small examples that point out miscompiles relatively quickly after a change was introduced. The other just side comment I wanted to make, given review has been mentioned a couple of times here, is I want to remind everybody, you don't have to be a code owner to review something, so long as you're, you're competent in the area. I have another question, which is, you mentioned that um, the structure where fuzzing for Clang source code is slow, like you said, for like five to 20 inputs per second. Uh, what would be the other end? Like, what, if, if, if the mutator was not slow, or if the program was not slow, what could we expect? Like, what's the overhead of the fuzzing library itself? Uh, when I profile, uh, so, what, what, where the overhead comes from uh, while fuzzing Clang or LVMIR? Uh, the fuzzing library doesn't introduce any overhead. There is a constant overhead from the sanitizer and from coverage uh, instrumentation roughly to X, but when I profile the, this thing, I get all kind of weird things like pass manager. I've heard that there is new pass manager coming soon, uh, but yeah, we see pass manager, we see some strange flag parsing stuff in the, in the, in the profile. So there are some some inefficiencies in the LVM infrastructure, which I haven't dug into. Well, so like, let's say, let's say we had an executable that returned zero in its main function and a mutator that did nothing. Like, how many inputs per second could we expect to get? So on, on the mangler, which is not exactly what you described, but a simple thing. On the mangler, un, unless we hit the timeout case, we get about uh, 50 to 100,000 executions per second. Is it, does it do anything in parallel, or is it all serialized? No, no, it's just one core, one CPU, one, one process. Yeah, okay. Uh, thank you for presentation and uh, answers. Uh, about uh, Csmith, so it's a really powerful tool. We, we have found a lot of bugs with, uh, with uh, using it. So Csmith uh, 2, I think, uh, yeah, it's welcome. Yeah, yeah, so John and I need some beer tonight. <laughs> Thank you, thank you, and I think uh, this uh, finishes our uh, presentation for today, and uh, yeah. Applaud.